So let's look at some of the beliefs, if you like, what I would call false reincarnation beliefs, and let's look at them from the point of view of love. Now you have it, you have the list there. What what I'll get you to do maybe is if, if you just yell out the first belief, and then we'll look at it. So yell out the first belief. Karma, <laughs> whatever you sow, you shall reap. Is paid during many lifetimes. Okay, karma is paid through many lifetimes. You've heard this, right? Yes. In other words, here's you. If you're a female. And you lived a life, so let's call that your life. Then you passed. You went to the spirit world. So you're now in the spirit world. What normally does most reincarnation beliefs say at that point? A bit of a life review whatever and then to progress you have to come back to earth as another person and the reason why you have to is because you have karma or law of compensation I would call it or we could call it what you sow you reap in other words you sow some nasties and so you're going to reap some nasties now that get imposed upon this lifetime but there's only a few snags with them. One snag is that you can't remember what you did. Follow me? So that makes it pretty hard, doesn't it? Like, how do you deal with karma from a previous lifetime that you can't remember you had? Well, that's why you've got to keep coming back. That's why you've got to keep going back. <laughs> Endlessly. Endlessly. Now, can you see already, if we understand the soul too, we're already we can start seeing that if I had karma from a previous lifetime and I reincarnate, that karma will affect the law of attraction in my current lifetime, which will even cause more law of attraction events, which I may make choices about that are disharmonious with love. And so the next time I come, I could actually be in a much worse condition. Now there are some beliefs on earth that say that actually I end up like an ant. <laughs> Sorry, that's meant to be an ant. Um, because of the choices that I made in the previous lifetime. Right. Where do you go from there? Where do you go from being an ant? <laughs> Amoeba. <laughs> only, only up. <laughs> only up. Okay. Right. Now, let's look at the love in this process. Let's look at this now from a parent's perspective. Right. So what we're really saying from a parent's perspective is, little, little, little what's her name? Little Sally, right? Little Sally did some wrong things. She made some wrong choices. Why did she make them? It wasn't her fault, was it? It's because of her parents and whatever. But anyway, she made some wrong choices, right? She made some wrong choices. So what I'm going to do now is face her up to those choices in the spirit world and then send her back to correct those choices. But I'm not going to tell her what they were. <laughs> now, does that sound very fair to you? Does that sound loving to you? Can you see what's going on there? If it was, it, wouldn't the loving thing be to tell you? Or that you've got a record of them inside of you that you can connect to and release? That you know, yeah, last life I did this, last life I did that, last life I was a minister. Dancer and, you know, like, you know, this is the choices that I made. I decided that I'd go to. It would be great to remember it, wouldn't it? If you're going to deal with the karma, you need to remember it. Isn't that not true? Isn't, isn't the whole philosophical basis behind that that God isn't a separate soul? So, um, so therefore, you know, when you say it wouldn't be loving from God's point of view. They don't even, those people don't even see it from that perspective. So, For some, God isn't a separate soul at all. No, that's right. But we, God, for some, God is just fragmented into you. In other words, we're all God. But we're all bits of God. God's everything. Yeah. Well, yeah, even, even animals, plants and everything are all God as well. Yeah. Right. So God, in other words, under those circumstances, is not an entity. So that's a very Buddhist viewpoint. Whereas a more Hindu viewpoint is... That, that God is an entity, a separate entity, and we are separate entities that go through the cycle. 
of life. But the, the, pro, the concept of, of not being loving is only relevant if there's a being to be loving, isn't it? If God's everything, then who cares whether it's loving or not? It's just the way it is. I mean, this, doesn't that follow? Yeah, that's right. See, what's happened with a lot of these beliefs is we've come up with ways of justifying pain. Can you see that? So one good way of justifying pain is to say, oh, there's no such thing as pain. Actually, it's all just all part of the same thing. But quite often you hear like, you know, pain and pleasure, it's just all the one thing. Does it feel like the one thing to you? No, it's funny that, isn't it? It doesn't feel like the one thing, but we say it anyway. It helps. So what happens a lot of times is we tell ourselves messages, which we then come to believe, so that we can explain to ourselves why we're in so much pain and suffering. But what actually happens with that? Our pain and suffering often doesn't alleviate all of our entire life. And uh, as we'll talk about in a minute, even as a spirit often doesn't alleviate because of these beliefs. And so in the end, these belief systems are unloving in themselves. They are actually damaging your own viewpoint of yourself, your own viewpoint of others, and your own viewpoint of the universe. Right? And anything that does that is not harmonious with love. So, can you see how it all works? We can get very philosophical here, right? Which I don't want to really do. So we can get very philosophical and, and by the way, I just need to point out too, there's lots of spirits who have come for this discussion. Um, so, um, it's one reason I'm feeling a little bit hot again. Um, there's lots of spirits who have come to this discussion because they believe in reincarnation, but they are feeling locked up in the belief. They, they can't reincarnate onto Earth. They know they can't. They don't understand why. They feel they have to reincarnate on the earth to progress, but they don't understand why they're not progressing and reincarnating on the earth and so forth. So there's quite a number of spirits who have been brought here for this discussion as well. So I'll address things from a spirit perspective at times and from a person on earth perspective at times. But looking at this whole process firstly, is it loving to stop the person from knowing what they've done wrong? It's not loving, is it? Particularly if you're expecting them to correct it in the next existence. So why would God set up such a process? Well, you wouldn't think he would, would you? If, would you? Like, would you with your children set up a process where you punish them for something even that they did 10 years ago, even after they've dealt with it, would you set up a process where you've set up pro uh, this punishment process? Would you actually want the child, if this was your child, would you want them to go through this process without knowing? 